Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to create a custom layer in the MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox for implementing the Tversky loss function for semantic segmentation. For autonomous pr uh, uh, driving and ADAS problems uh, and other type of uh, se semantic segmentation problems, you have the problem that of imbalanced data. For example, in the case of uh, ADAS, uh, you have a bunch of data about a uh, the road, uh, the buildings, but you have a few data about pedestrians. And because of that, pedestrians are not going to be detected as well as as a, 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 as the the road. And which is very important because uh, you that's the most important thing to detect, to avoid hitting a pedestrian. So that's where the Tversky uh, function comes. Basically, it is this function over here, which we are going to implement, and it helps a uh, balancing the data so that the pedestrians can be detected as good as we detect the road. OK, so for that, uh, the MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox has a bunch of uh, layers that uh, that are very common, like input layer, max pooling, convolution, ReLU, uh, LSTM, etc. Uh, but sometimes we have to implement our own layers, and we can do that uh, by uh, doing our own classes like this one. In this case, we're extending the classification layer because we are only interested in computing the loss function, we're, we, which we're going to implement in the forward loss method. And you can see in here that we are doing uh, the same function that is defined in, in here. OK, uh, so the advantage of doing this custom layer is that uh, we can do our own layer and still leverage the the tools that facilitate the creation and the and the training of neural networks. Uh, I added uh, I'm, I'm go, uh, uh, the semantic segmentation problem doing done in this example is going to be the same one uh, uh, for training. Uh, I mean, for detecting triangles and doing semantic segmentation in triangles. It, it, we're going to use the same data set. So if you want to see more details about the data set and the problem, please see the, a refer the video in the references in the description of this video. Uh, you can take a look to get familiar with the data and also with the problem. So yeah, so I'm not going to go through much details about that. OK, so this is an example that we're going to walk through. Uh, you just open LiveScript to start the example. That will take us here. And this is the, the class. Uh, we're extending classification layer. Uh, we just imp uh, have in a constructor. We have some uh, constant and non-constant properties to implement the Tversky loss function in here. So that's all there is to it. So we're going to just create the layer. Uh, this is the alpha and beta parameters. And that will get us to the constructor. Uh, basically capturing the properties, nothing strange. <coughs> and then once we create the layer, we're going to do some validation with some dummy data. And that'll get us to the forward loss. And you can see that we have, this is the output values and the expected values, but this is dummy data. We're going to revisit this again. Uh, yeah, so we have a matrix here and then we do all reductions and eventually we get a scalar down here but we we're gonna it's gonna be blocked multiple times so i'm gonna take out this out validation went fine uh, okay so now uh, let's create the layers uh, it is a convolutional neural network with an encoding phase that brings down the geometrical space using the max pooling and then the decoding phase using the transpose layer so the input is going to be a 32 by 32 image uh, which are going to be small triangles uh, and then the output is going to be the same size. Uh, but, uh, uh, so with the classification and the classification, we're going to use the Tversky uh, layer in here. OK, so by executing this, we're going to call the constructor. And again, this is simple. So I'm going to get this out. And now we can analyze the network. And the network is very similar to the one that we saw in the, in the other video that is in the references. Uh, we have an input 32, 32 is brought down by the max pooling and then brought up again by a, tr a transpose. But we have the Tversky layer at the end. It's a very simple sequential convolutional layer uh, network. OK, so the data is going to be sa the same as the other problem, the triangles and the uh, labels, uh, which are images of the same size. We only need to provide the path. We're going to use the image data store for the images. And we have a triangle or background, for which is white and black, 
and we have a pixel label data store. In the other video, we use a combined data store to uh, pair the image and the labels, but in here we use uh, the pixel label image data store, which are, are, is going to pair them. Since this problem is so common, semantic segmentation, then the MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox have tools for that. Uh, for the training, we're going to use Adaptive Momentum with 100 epochs, and we're going to drop the learning rate. And no validation data. Validation is very important, but for simplicity of this problem, we're not going to have validation. And then we're just going to call train network. And the train network is going to take the data store, the pixel label image data store is going to take the layers that we created and the training options. And it's going to return us a train network. So let's run it. And that'll take us to the forward loss function. So the, the input, the so this uh, is going to take us, uh, let's take a look at the network again. Let's, let's go to the, let's go to the base workspace and take a look at the network once again. The input of the network uh, is going to be the, the image and the output is going to be the classification of triangle and background. And it's going to be like this. So this output of the network let's go back again to the here this is the output of the network so you can see the size it's going to be uh, the same size of the output and with 50 samples so let's take uh, one of them so you can see that the probability is between 0 and 1 saying okay you're a background or you're a triangle and for t t is going to be the same size exactly the same size this is expected value and this is coming this is coming from the data store the labels this is expected value it's coming from here and let's take a look at it okay so in here uh, we don't have probabilities we have zero and one and that's gonna be a uh, yeah so basically it's either triangle or background okay so if you want to implement a very simple loss function, it's just a matter of subtracting a y by t and applying some reduction and returning a scalar. Okay, uh, so what happens with this loss function? Uh, what's going to happen in training is in the training, uh, the input image is going to be fed to the network and you're going to get the output. Then the output is compared with the expected output, which is t in here. They are subtracted and then you compute the gradient. And from the gradient, you update the weights of the convolution layers, the max pooling layers, etc., uh, to train the network. And you might wonder how how in the world can you get the gradient with just a scalar at the output? I wonder the same thing, and I did some uh, debugging into the scripts of the MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox, and found out that basically what happens, uh, and also is uh, confirming documentation, is that if you're doing, let's say, a training um, a custom network using DLF uh, eval DL gradient, there's a contract saying that for any operation that you do under DF, DL, uh, DLF eval, there's going to be a, 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 the operations are going to be stored symbolically. And once you get here, uh, you're going to get a tree, a DAG of symbolic operations. And that uh, symbolic op uh, operation tree is going to be differentiated symbolically from the loss, which is the output, until the weights. And that's how you get the gradients between the, the weights and the loss. And that gradient is going to be uh, an object of the same size as the, as the weights. And that is used to update the weights of the layers. So you're going to compute all those gradients for each of the weights of, of the neural network. OK, so we're not using DLFEVAL in here, but uh, most likely the train network might be using it. So that's how the, the loss function, uh, that's why the loss function is important to, to basically train the, the neural network. And by implementing this Tversky formula, we're going to provide a balanced way to train the network. And you can see that the output again, you have these uh, matrices over here, but then you have a scalar by applying a series of sum reductions in all dimensions. Okay, I'm going to take that out so that it can keep training and it's going to take a while uh, to train. And yeah, we're going to see that uh, as in the in the video, in the references, we see that also the GPU percentage usage is about 2% in average. It, it, 
at least it's using something, but it could be better. The accuracy qu quickly jumps to close to 99% and the loss quickly goes down because basically we're training for a small uh, data set and also the, the problem is quite simple, basically semantic segmentation of, of triangles. Okay, I'm gonna pause until it finishes. Okay, training finished, uh, close to 100% accuracy. So now uh, we have the net, the train net, uh, which is this object. And let's create a, an image to try it out. So this, uh, we train this uh, with small 32 by 32 images of tri or individual triangles to test this. We're using an image with a bunch of triangles. Okay, so the size of this image it's gonna be 256 is a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're gonna use the computer vision toolbox method semantic segmentation, which takes an image and a train network for semantic segmentation. And it's gonna give you the labels and the scores, the confidence. Okay, so now uh, after this, we get you, we use the image processing toolbox uh, label overlay function to overlay the labels and the original image. And from that, we're gonna observe so in the left we have the original image and the right we have the overlaid uh, labels. So we can see the purple are the triangles and the blue is the background. So uh, you, you can, if you compare this with the reference video that is using uh, a very basic convolution network without the Tversky loss, you could see that the precision is a little better with Tversky. Okay, so to recap, uh, we basically created a, a custom layer for implementing the Tversky loss uh, by just extending a class and implementing the method that we wanted to overwrite. And we added this layer into a sequential layer and used the regular tools uh, from the MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox to train the network for semantic segmentation. And it gave us better results. Uh, not perfect, but a little better maybe. Thank you very much uh, for watching.